What is going on everybody? My name is Winthorpe. The Ring Collective is the name of the channel. Today's video, hopefully I can keep it short for you guys, but I want to show you how to export high quality sl slow motion videos to whatever social media platform that you want. IG, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, it applies to all of them. Now, there's two words that you can keep in mind and, and remember once this video is over, you'll be good and your videos will look better. I'm telling you, it's going to be compression and bitrate. So you got the new camera, right? You saved up your money. You got the new camera. You got a Sony A4. You got the nice lenses. You got an A7S III, all of that stuff. Going on trips now, shooting all this crazy content, shooting 4K slow-mo. And then you export it out, you upload it on IG and it looks like trash. Now you're blaming the camera. It's not the camera's fault. Let's start there. It's your fault. And it's the export settings. So it comes back to the first thing we need to remember. I want you guys to remember it's compression. Compression is what destroys the quality of these videos. Compression, compression, compression. Once you upload the IG, it gets compressed. Depending on your export settings out of, out of Premiere, it gets compressed before it even gets to IG. So it goes through all of these compression phases. And then by the time it actually ends up on your page, it's like, it looks like a completely different video. So depending on the video resolution, your export settings, it will depend on how much it will get compressed. And then also once you upload it again, what's going to be the final resolution of the video. So you could have shot this amazing 4K slow motion video, or even if it is 1080, whatever, 2K resolution. And then by the time it ends up on Facebook, by the time, even, by the time it ends up on YouTube, it doesn't look, it doesn't have that crisp quality look. And just with a few tweaks in your export settings is going to make the major, a major, major difference because we can't fight the fact that, yes, it's going to get compressed. You know, that's how it's able to, you know, upload it that fast. It's going to get compressed. But with our export settings, we can help counteract how much it will get compressed and how much of the data we can retain. So once it does get compressed, it could still hold some nice quality. And with YouTube, once you export it, if we have the export settings correct, it will maintain uh, all of the, the quality of it. Now, I should put all in quotations. It does have, it still has a little compression, but nowhere near like IG, you know, or, or anything like that. So once you get to your export page, let's just hop right into it. Once you get to your export page, there's, there's something that I want you guys to look at before you go to bitrate, and that's gonna be your output. If you shot a, a slow motion video, 120 frames per second, you're going to wanna bring your output to 60 frames per second. Anything lower than that, it's gonna to start to look quite choppy. So that's gonna be the first thing that you want to adjust. Now, here's the most important one. And I'll do a follow-up video to show other factors that will determine how, how well your video will, will come out, how much quality it will retain, like the, the format and time interpolation and things like that. But for, day, for today, we're just gonna keep it on the bit rate settings. So the bit rate to give you the short version is the amount of data that's gonna be in your videos. So the higher the bit rate, the more data, the higher the quality of video will be. The con to that is as the bit rate goes up, the file size gets bigger. If you have a 4K slow motion video, that's gonna be a huge file already. Depending on the duration, it could get even higher. And then once you start to increase the bit rate, it gets even, even bigger. So you always have to keep that in mind. So if you're pressed for time, actually, let me take that back. If you just wanna export it out and just get it out the way, you always have to keep this in mind. Is this is for your business, or this is for your client, and this is your business call, this is your portfolio. You want to spend that extra time to make sure you always deliver the highest quality product. So it doesn't matter if it's gonna take long, it will take longer, but remember, 
hey, you're representing your business, you're representing your stuff. Take the extra time to do it right. So if you go down to our bit rate encoding, we want to go down to VBR two pass. VBR one pass, basically, whatever the bit rate you set it to, it analyzes it, renders it out, we get it out of the way. So if you are, I mean, just really, really pressed for time, VBR one pass will do. I prefer VBR two pass, which means it's gonna analyze it. And then once it understands, okay, it's gonna really require this bit right here, this bit right there. Then on the second pass, it renders it out. So VBR two pass is the highest quality that you can get with your bit rate settings. And for our output, we want 60, that's at 60 FPS and it's a 4K video. YouTube even has a cheat sheet. We'll just use YouTube for the example. YouTube will show you that for a 4K 60 FPS, 60 FPS video, you want it to be at 68 megabytes per second. So that's gonna be our target bit rate. And then you notice it'll adjust the maximum bit rate. So once you set your proper target bit rate and you hit ex export, it's gonna run through its course and then that's it, you can export. And you're gonna see the difference. It's gonna hold the quality way more. Now, where would you have gotten this wrong? Let's say for example, you went to your presets and you wanted to do high quality, okay, 4K, for example. If you select it, it brings it down to a VBR one pass. Now, if you notice here, interesting, it has the target bit rate as 80. Now, this is where it comes a pro and a con. Yes, like I said before, more data, high quality video. But with YouTube, for example, if the bit rate is higher than what it's recommended, it will actually compress it more. And that's very interesting because I used to use a lot of these presets before. I'll be like, okay, boom, whatever. I guess it has to be right. And then once you upload it, I'm realizing the quality isn't what it should be. So for example, this is at 80. So it's way higher than what the recommended bit, target bit rate should be. It will compress your video down more. So we gotta go back, put it back to 68. And then we can hit export. Use maximum render quality. So just by that little tweak alone, if you were to test it out, you will see the difference in your videos. And this applies not only to slow motion videos, it applies to you know, regular 4K 30, 4K 24, 1080p, it, it goes across the board. But it's gonna require you to take that little extra time to render it out, you know, change your settings, and make sure you have all your parameters set before you finally hit export. I know a lot of times we just get so hyped when we shoot something that we just wanna hurry up, get it, get it out, and upload it and show everybody. It doesn't work like that. You always wanna make sure you're delivering the highest quality product, especially if this is your business, right? You wanna make sure you always deliver top notch because this could be the video that catches the eye of your next client, your next brand, your next partnership. So you always wanna make sure you lead always at 100% at the highest quality. So quick video, I was able to keep it short like I promised. I'll definitely do more of these um, because it's a lot more that goes into it, not just with the bit rate. There's a few other parameters that you do have to be mindful of, but I'll get that on the next video. I'm gonna sound like a YouTuber. If you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's grow this thing. More videos are on the way. Peace.